among the many mandatory items required for a traditional Soviet New Year celebration are a bottle of champagne, a bowl of Olivier salad, and, of course, a film by Aldar Rezanov. A director whose career spanned six decades, Rezanov explored genres from action comedies to tragic dramas. In this episode, we discover how Rezanov's films became a staple of holidays and a mirror of contemporary Soviet society. Eldar Rizanov was born in 1927 in the city of Samara. His family soon moved to Moscow, where Rizanov would spend most of his life. His parents divorced in 1930, and Rizanov would rarely see his father before the latter was arrested and incarcerated for reasons unclear. Even as a young man, Rizanov already showed himself as a stubborn and impulsive person. He passed an exam for a high school diploma at age 16. A fan of adventure novels, Eldar wished to attend the Odessa Seafaring Academy, but in the meantime settled for studying at VGIK, or All Union State Institute of Cinematography, at the directing department, with very little knowledge of films or the industry behind them. After studying under Grigory Kozintsev and Sergei Eisenstein, Rezanov graduated in 1950. This period of time was marked by low film output and strict censorship, and therefore Rezanov's career as a director began at the central studio of documentary films. Around the same time, he married his colleague Zoya Fomina and, in 1952, celebrated the birth of daughter Olga. During his five years at the studio, Rezanov made a number of documentaries, often working together with his wife or his lifelong friend Vasily Katanyan. The job sometimes took Rezanov into distant frontier lands, but, as he would later mention, the documentaries of those days had little in common with reality. A chance opportunity occurred in 1955 when Rezanov was offered a directing job at Mosfilm, the country's largest studio, and he was glad to accept it. His first task was co-directing The Spring Voices, also known as The Happy Youth, a concert-type film and the first Soviet widescreen picture, although only a standard ratio version appears to be available today. The film is entertaining but unremarkable, though it is notable for being an early role of future star Nadezhda Rumyantseva. Most film director Ivan Pyryev tasked Rizanov with making a musical comedy, something Rizanov was not thrilled about. The newcomer director had to constantly prove himself in front of others, and the result was The Carnival Night, a film in which a group of young people plan a glamorous New Year's concert, while a grumpy bureaucrat, afraid of backlash from above, attempts to take the fun out of the celebration. Despite its simple plot, mostly consisting of various musical numbers, the film was a huge success. It jump-started the career of its director, turned Lyudmila Gurchenko into a star overnight, and ushered in the Khrushchev thaw era of fresh ideas in Soviet cinema. Thus, Rizanov's feature-length debut became a staple of holiday television programming. Following the success of The Carnival Night was Rizanov's next romantic comedy, The Girl Without an Address. Pasha and Katya, two strangers who met on a train, arrive in Moscow, but during parting, Pasha learns only a fragment of Katya's address. Undeterred, Pasha decides to search the entire city while looking for Katya. In the meanwhile, Katya changes many jobs as she seeks to prove her worth to her grandpa. The film is as much a romantic story as it is about friendship, 
with both main characters closely supported on their journeys. Yuri Belov of Carnival Night is joined here by Nikolai Rybnikov, another Soviet star from the 50s. The plot of the film is not original by any means, but its many songs, combined with ample sights of contemporary Moscow, create a unique atmosphere of nostalgic warmth. After an initial period of success, Rizanov experienced his first serious setback. The same grumpy bureaucrats, who were so often the targets of Rizanov's lampooning, were now putting his career at risk. In The Man From Nowhere, a satirical comedy and Rizanov's next film, Vladimir, an explorer, meets Chudak, a caveman of sorts from an elusive tribe. Chudak comes to Moscow with Vladimir, where his childlike naivete and endless energy causes much trouble to himself and others. Chudak's pursuit of trying to fit in magnified undesirable human qualities from an outsider perspective. The plot, based from the start on an outlandish idea, only grows more ridiculous as it continues. The film would have been a breakthrough for future stars Sergei Yursky and Anatoly Papanov. Unfortunately, the film's unusual approach was criticized in official publications even before its release, and within a few days after the premiere, the film was removed from theaters by the order of a high-ranking politician. Today, the film remains among the most obscure of Rizanov's works. In the meanwhile, Rizanov continued to mock needless censorship in the short film genre. In How Robinson Was Made, a writer is asked by the editor of a literary magazine to adapt the novel Robinson Crusoe into a Soviet reality. The editor then intervenes heavily in the writing process, ensuring that the uninhabited island in the story be fully staffed with the local party committee and concluding that Robinson is unnecessary to the plot. Played out by two skillful actors, the short film was included in Absolutely Seriously, an anthology of short films, which also premiered Leonid Gaidai's Dog Barbos and The Unusual Cross. Rizanov then returned to familiar territory with a true musical. The Hussar Ballad, based on a popular stage play and inspired by a historical person, is an action-filled humorous adventure film set during the Napoleonic Wars. Lieutenant Rzhevsky, a pompous cavalryman, is financially ruined and has to marry Shura, whom he expects to be frail, sentimental and dull-witted. Unknown to Rzhevsky, Shura is a skilled rider and fencer. She changes into a man's uniform and follows the man to war. Again encountering Rzhevsky, she introduces herself as Shura's male cousin, which leads to many amusing moments as Rzhevsky discusses Shura in frank terms. Невеста, Боже, бьет холодный пот. Уже ли на собой так безобразно? Судить об этом верно можно разно. По-моему, так записной урод. The casting of comedic actor Igor Ilyinsky in a brief role as Field Marshal Kutuzov caused much concern to the censorship officials, and the film just barely avoided being cancelled before its release on the 150th anniversary of the Battle of Borodino. Thanks to its talented performers, memorable lyrics, and the score by Tikhon Hrennikov, the Hussar ballad remains popular to this day. Moving away from purely comedic films, Rizanov began to include dramatic moments, and his next picture Give Me the Book of Complaints was a transitional work into a subgenre for which Rizanov would be best known. Yuri, a journalist, spends the evening at the Dandelion, 
a restaurant with appalling service, aged decor and watered-down drinks. He writes a scathing review of the establishment, which greatly upsets Tatiana, its young manager. Yuri and Tatiana meet and, after an initial coolness, become friends, although Tatiana's jealous boyfriend complicates things. In the meantime, Tatiana strives to change her unpopular restaurant into a fashionable place, even going against the wishes of a high-ranking bureaucrat. Besides the lead actors, a familiar trio from the comedies of Leonid Gaidai makes an appearance, while Rezanov himself began a long tradition of director's cameos. An amusing insight into the Soviet business model, the film did not reach the popularity of Rezanov's other works. The lessons learned in the previous film were applied in Watch Out for the Car, a more refined comedy drama about a Soviet Robin Hood. Yuri Detichkin is an insurance agent by day and a car thief by night. A sincere man with noble ideals, Yuri only steals the cars of those who obtain their fortune illegally and donates the profits from sold vehicles to orphanages. As Yuri is trying to rob his next target, the serial thief draws the attention of Detective Podbirozovikov, with whom Yuri happens to be in the same drama club. These activities leave little time for Yuri to salvage his fragile relationship with Luba. The film turned out to be Rizanov's biggest success to date. Its mixture of genres, unusual plot and a morally questionable protagonist left a lasting impression. The talented primary and supporting cast of comedic and dramatic actors contributed to its lasting popularity, and so did Rizanov's film crew. It was the first of many future collaborations with writer Emil Braginsky and composer Andrei Petrov, and his second film with cinematographer Vladimir Nahapsev. Zigzag of Fortune continues the theme of private and public property in the USSR with yet another controversial main character. Photographer Volodya works in a photo studio. Tasked with collecting money for the studio's communal fund, Volodya borrows the entirety of the fund to buy a government bond lottery ticket and is overwhelmed when he wins the top prize of 10,000 rubles. His co-workers are much less enthusiastic, arguing that since everyone contributed to the fund, then the winnings should also be split. After a debate, Volodya is kicked out of the fund and his winning ticket is taken away, all while he is going through a rough time with his girlfriend. A parallel story follows the awkward relationship between Aleftina, Volodya's unmarried and plain-looking co-worker, and Ivan, an older man. No, they find each other unpleasant and unattractive until Ivan shows himself in a new light. Several members of the cast became regulars in Rizanov's films, most notably Georgi Burkov, who would go on to play in seven of his pictures. In the late 1960s, Rizanov had another unpleasant encounter with Soviet censorship. While making a film adaptation of the play Cyrano de Bergerac, Rizanov settled on controversial poet Yevgeny Yevtushenko as the lead, but the officials demanded that he be replaced with someone else. Rizanov stood firm, and the production was shut down. The topics of retirement and obsolescence are the main focus of Rizanov's next film, the title of which can be translated as Old Man Robbers. Yuri Nikulin and Evgeny Yevstigneev star as aging friends at the ends of their careers. Nikolai, a police investigator, hasn't solved a case in a while, and his boss is forced to vacate the position for a well-connected individual. 
Valentin, an engineer, is stubbornly resisting retirement despite the strong urges of his co-workers. The old men team up to instigate the crime of the century, which Nikolai can then quickly solve and keep his job. Their art heist backfires, and the elderly criminals have to devise a backup plan. Meanwhile, Nikolai's conscience is tortured by surreal dreams inspired by different genres, from horror to action to a core drama. Desperately clinging to a feeling of relevance, Nikolai must decide whether his pursuit is worth living a dishonest life. The story of Eldar Rizanov will be continued in part 2 of this episode. Stay tuned as we take a look at Rizanov's most successful works and the reasons for their continuing popularity.